People are usually clamoring to get out of the driver rehabilitation center. But this year's inept motorists are desperate to stick around. In our last episode, every single one of them said they didn't even want to graduate because they didn't deserve to graduate. So we kept all of them for more vehicular training. And judging by the way they've been destroying vehicles, well, they really need more vehicular training. This is Canada's worst driver. At the Driver Rehabilitation Center, we're trying to fix the nation's lousiest motorists. This year, eight people were nominated as Canada's worst driver. We've already graduated two of them from our program. Congratulations. But the remaining six? Well, they're the type of people who terrify folks on bikes. Charlottetown. Punk rock singer Jacob was nominated by Stacy, his girlfriend. If Jacob ever hit a motorcyclist, get the f out of my way! The biker won't be as lucky as the van drivers he slammed into. I just totally hit them head on, and they were they ended their honeymoon in like neck races. In driver's rehab, this aging punk has been changing. I haven't had the right attitude, and these things are starting to become apparent. You came here for this life change, didn't you? Yeah. From Windsor, Ontario, mechanical engineering student Arun was nominated as Canada's worst driver by Santa because he backs up without looking. Mm, there's a cyclist. Go through the building. Wow. You can see that guy going. And he goes forward without seeing. All right. Well, I swear to God, I didn't even see that. At our rehab center, Arun is humble. I think I just started learning. And he's learning every day. And I hope I'll learn more. The next Canada's worst driver candidate is unemployed Angelina, nominated by her friend Christine. I hit an old lady in a car. <laughs> When we met Angelina, she almost hit a young man on a motorcycle. Oh, I almost turned into that. Oh, idiot. My God. In our rehab center, we've made Angelina understand just how dangerous she is. Oh, my God. That was the worst thing ever. Why are you crying right now? I'm just scared to drive really bad. Really bad. In Regina. You notice you're driving their bike path? Yeah, I bet. have you noticed there's no bikes around? Mike Butt thinks his brother-in-law, Jody, nominated him. This is my $300 dream machine here. Because he has a habit of buying vehicles that are so bad, motorcyclists aren't safe behind him. Oh, oh. Ah, it was my muffler. In rehab, Mike has learned that he's here because he's unsafe in any vehicle. My confidence was dangerously high. I thought I could do a lot more stuff than I really could do. You know, almost like I was living, you know, in a delusional little world of mine, but... The next worst driver candidate, Father Giles, was nominated by his brother, Guy, for being dangerously slow. This easy-riding priest owns a motorized two-wheeler, but cruising, well, it leaves him vulnerable. So he rides his minivan, leaving flocks of others vulnerable. 
In rehab, we're getting Father Giles to see what's going on around him. That was terrific. <laughs> the final Canada's Worst Driver candidate is Crystal. She was nominated by her ex-sister-in-law, Teresa. When we met Crystal... Hello. 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 This businesswoman had been in... 18 or more accidents. And it didn't really bother her. Oh. Could you imagine you on a motorcycle? I've always wanted to learn how to drive a motorcycle. When Crystal drifted forward and nearly hit a bicyclist, she thought it was hysterical. Crystal, <laughs> you almost, you almost hit that man on the bike. <laughs> oh my god! Crystal drives like it's a joke. You think it's a right too, not a privilege? No, you ev you have to have a license. It's there, there's Everybody. no privilege. Why is it a privilege? That doesn't even make sense. At our rehabilitation center, we've tried to get through to Crystal. Oh, that's not what Philippe taught me. But she has an excuse for everything. This car is rigged. She won't give up her vices. Talking on the phone or smoking a cigarette isn't that bad. And frankly, She's hard to believe sometimes. Do you shoulder check in your normal driving? Yes. <gasps> Crystal! <laughs> well, Teresa, I and just want you I to just want to go home. Crystal even defends not wearing glasses, which leaves her with no depth perception. Did you just touch your fingers together? And corrective lenses are a condition of her license. One of your eyes is 20. 120. Yeah, but maybe I don't use that eye when I'm looking at a sign. Convincing Crystal that she's dangerous is the job of our experts. You're basically breaching your license by even driving without corrective lenses. That's traffic reporter Cam Woolley, a former highway cop for the Ontario Provincial Police. We've also got psychologist Dr. Luisa Gambora, high-speed instructor Philippe Letourneau, and our head driving instructor, Peter Mellor. Early morning, evening, uh, that's when you can run into major problems without good depth perception. I understand the consequences. To make Canada's worst drivers learn how to move around in thick traffic without hitting other vehicles, we're going to put them all on the same oval course at the same time. Aside from avoiding each other, their mission will be to pass me twice. Now that sounds easy until you realize that I will be driving our big stretch limousine. Luckily, I will only be going 25K an hour. To execute a safe lane change, drivers must follow four steps. Do you want to go over what exact the order is first? Probably should. Okay. So let's check your mirrors. Check your mirrors. Signal. Signal. Then your shoulder check. Shoulder check. And then pass when it's safe. Okay. Here's the logic. You check your mirrors to see if the coast is clear. You signal to tell other traffic what you want to do. You shoulder check to make sure the coast is clear. Then you change lanes. Mirrors, signal, shoulder check, change. Entering the Safe Lane Change Challenge course, Mike shoulder checks, but doesn't signal as he scoots to the outside lane. I don't count. Crystal isn't shoulder checking or signaling. I, I don't have to look over my shoulder that way if I'm going yes, that way. Yes, you do! Angelina is panicking. Come on, okay, check my mirrors. Signal. Am I signaling? Whoa, 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 whoa. Jacob isn't shoulder checking. You didn't do shoulder check, did you? Oh, f And Arun is trying to do everything at once. I checked there, and then I looked back, and I was indicating at the same time. Swear to God, I checked. I would say do that one again. Just Sana, don't that be stupid, do Sana. It's not smart to change lanes without following proper procedure. Don't hit Angelina. Oh, don't hit me. I checked it, and then I drove, OK? Don't hit me, Arun. He's, like, right in your leg. He didn't even look over his shoulder. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is an example of 
utter careless driving. Uh, I think we're gonna have a room for a long time. That goes as incorrect. Sana, I'm sorry. don't be stupid, Sana. This is not incorrect, okay? Sana, don't do this. I'll tell you from now on. You're not observing me. That's your fault. Arun doesn't seem to observe the yellow dashes that indicate the edge of the lane. There's no indicator. Arun, I've noticed you've been driving in the middle of the lane. Sana, this lane is so tight. I don't want to hit objects. You know what I mean? Like everyone does cut a little bit in. On a multi-lane road like this, you are required to stay within one lane. It's actually an offense called fail to drive in marked lane. Arun, your tires on, were okay? swinging. So what? Father Giles is slowly and steadily going about his correct lane changing. Check. Click. Check. Check. Go. Exactly. Two minutes later... The Padre just passed you. He's in! He's done! He's done? He's done. Ha ha ha, I'm a good passer. The tortoise has beaten the hairs. <laughs> After the break, our safe lane change challenge Oh my god, a room. turns a dangerous corner. Oh, no signal. Oh my god. Oh, man. Canadians drive a lot. In fact, we average just over 300 billion kilometers a year on the road. Billion, with a B. The breakdown goes like this. There are about 20 million registered vehicles in the country, and they each average about 15,000 clicks a year. Do the math, that's 300 billion kilometers. And to put that into perspective, well, 300 billion clicks is the same distance it would take to go to Pluto and back 25 times. With that much driving under our belts, why can't Canadians steer better? The nominees for Canada's Worst Driver have learned the correct procedure for a safe lane change. Mirrors. Signal. Shoulder. Go. But Mike's forgotten it. What didn't I do? You shoulder check, then you signal. It's mirrors, signal, shoulder check, then pass when safe. Okay, mirror, signal, shoulder. Oh, a rune. Mirror, signal, shoulder, and pass. Mirror, signal, shoulder, pass. So once again, say that again. Mirror, signal, shoulder, pass. Okay, let's see. Check, check. oh wait, mirrors. Okay. Ah, I don't know. That was bad. Ah. Mirrors, signal, shoulder. That was good. Getting it now. When drivers correctly pass my limousine twice, they're done. Mirror, signal, shoulder. Not hitting. If drivers do an incorrect lane change, okay, that no was incorrect. incorrect. How is that incorrect? The guilty driver has to lap the limo one extra time. You have to pass him three times. Two times? What are you saying three for? Sana, okay, this is ridiculous, okay? I seriously looked at the mirror, and then I turned. I'm not kidding. You didn't do it safely, you didn't do it right, and they can see it. They no, what are you saying is stupid, just... like, seriously. You're not watching it correctly, that's a problem. Having a more sentimental journey. Using my Signal. mirrors. Signal. For a while. Shoulder check. He's letting me in. Jacob is making the safe lane change procedure a habit. Mirrors, signal, shoulder, go. Jacob is learning. I don't always shoulder check, and I realize how important that is. Um, so that, that'll be the main take home for me, I believe. Back on the track, Angelina is checking over the wrong shoulder. Don't look there, we're already in this lane. Angelina doesn't seem to understand that the shoulder check is in the direction you want to go. She'll often look in the wrong direction. 
if you're in that lane, you don't have to check that side. You're only checking the side that you're going into. I don't think it's a bad thing to look over there. Looking is a good thing. I know, but you're taking your eyes off of where you want to go. Arun goes past Crystal, then cuts in front of her and slows down. Oh my gosh, what is he doing? He's crazy. Next lap, Arun cuts in front of me and slows down. What are you doing, man? Arun's a maniac. Arun is very dangerous. Very dangerous driver. Andrew's going to be pissed at Arun. Why did he cut me off like that? Arun is so oblivious to his own bad driving, he thinks he's done. Does Arun actually think he's done? Dude, you just cut him off so bad. There's no way you're done. All right, I'll, I might as well go. <laughs> you cut him off? I don't know. I don't know how Arun survives. Whoa, whoa. One lap later, Arun quits. That's it. It's all, it's all done. No, it's not. Don't worry about it. I'll talk to them. Arun is far from graduating. Oh, Holy smokes, man. Now he should go in one more time, man. You can't just veer across two lanes. For safety's sake, we'll stop Arun here. I never do the shoulder check or the indication, so I'll indicate and I'll do the shoulder check when I go back to Windsor. Okay, mirror, signal, shoulder check. She ain't there. I'm in. Okay, I'm getting the order down. I'm getting the order down. Mirror, signal, shoulder check. Go. Perfect. I think we're getting through to Mike Butt. Holy crap, they really freaking, they know what they're doing here, man. Crystal is also creating a habit of signaling, then shoulder checking. So that was another correct pass. But that was exceptionally well done. <laughs> Crystal has nothing to be cocky about. I'm Canada's best driver. <laughs> oh no, there was that cockiness again. So, it's only Mike Butt and Angelina left. Mirror, signal, shoulder, go. Awesome. Mike finishes just ahead of Angelina. I'm going to pull off the course, and I'm going to see if Angelina realizes. Mirror, signal, shoulder pass. Do, 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 do. She should be checking her mirrors to see where the other cars on this track are. If she's looking, she'll realize that I I'm gone. Mirror signal shoulder pass. Mirror signal shoulder pass. Mirror signal shoulder pass. I can't even. Where are you? Where's the limo? She's looking for it. Is this a joke? Where's the limo? What the? How does the limo disappear? I'm gonna be Canada's worst driver. That's exactly what Mike Butt said. Keep your comments to yourself, because I'm trying really hard. After the break. Why is everybody following us? Canada's worst drivers go on public roads at night. This is Jacob. What was it? I hope so. It looks like a car. Getting lost while driving at night is a, well, it's a scary feeling. And it's the next challenge for Canada's worst drivers. If you ever get confused motoring around in the dark because you're lost, just remember to find some help. Because as soon as you find help, you'll see the light and you'll realize, hey, I'm in the same world I've always been in. 33 kilometers away from the hotel where Canada's worst drivers are staying lies this desolate garage. We brought their own personal vehicles here. Now, the bad drivers are here too. Except they got here by bouncing around in the back of a blacked out van for the last hour. Welcome to the middle of nowhere, everyone. You're lost. 
You're gonna have to get yourself back to the hotel. Oh, dude, we're booped. Odd that you should say that to Jody because he's not who you're driving with. Oh, what? For this challenge, drivers have to leave with someone else's nominator. You can do whatever you want. I'll see you at your hotel. We're putting the bad drivers on empty public roads because we want to see if they've really been learning what we've been teaching. I can't drive at night. Neither can her car. The headlights don't work on the car. <laughs> Want to see the headlights? Does anybody see the headlights don't work on this car? I can't drive. They don't work. They don't work. I'm not getting in the car. Didn't anybody check this? Oh, we checked it. And we learned that Angelina's registration has expired. So we had to tow her car here. To teach Angelina that an unregistered car can't be driven, she has to get it out of here without driving it. Are we just going to stand around like idiots or what? Before heading out with Teresa, Father Giles wants to get directions. Well, these guys in the garage, maybe we could ask them. We have to get to Barry. To Barry? Yes. While Teresa takes notes... Okay. What do you want to do, left or right, Guy? Jacob heads into the night with Guy. Let's try a right, eh? Arun follows with Stacy. Let's follow someone. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And Mike follows like a lemming with Santa. A bunch of people are going this way, so I'm going to go this way. Why is everybody following us? I don't know. <laughs> they definitely shouldn't, because I definitely don't know where we're going. Father Giles is following Teresa's perfect directions. When we come to this road here, yep. we're going to make a left. But everyone turned right. I don't care what everybody did. Fifteen minutes later... Oh my God, Andy! Angelina's talking to her boyfriend in Indonesia. And the car lights don't work on this stupid car. Andy is half a world away. But Angelina wants him to fix the car's headlights. When are you coming home? Crystal is staring at approaching headlights. See, this is why I don't like driving at night, because cars come at you. Well, yeah, they come at you in the daytime too, baby doll. No, honey, but there's lights, and they come towards you. Crystal stares at the oncoming lights and drifts towards them. Watch, don't drift on the yellow line, though. Why do I keep doing that? Yes, you're drifting because they're coming. At least Crystal can see them coming. This afternoon, we sent Crystal to the optometrist. I'm having problems with my uh, right eye for driving. I'm supposed to wear glasses, but I don't. After a few quick tests... Seven or eight? Eight. The doctor sees Crystal's problem. If you want to, we can fit you with a contact lens just for your right eye to see if that will kind of reduce the, the distortions. In the blink of a bulging eye, yeah. Crystal has her new contact lens. Straight ahead. Good. You got it. Shut up. It's in. Wow. For Crystal, clear vision has arrived. Well, thank you very, very much. You're very, very welcome. Yay. Maybe I can uh, drive now. Maybe. We'll see. I'm wearing a contact, and I can see everything now. So I'm going to be a good driver now. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> good drivers look where they want to go. On our lost driving challenge, Crystal is looking at the oncoming traffic. Yeah, as soon as you see a car, you tend to, like, get into their lane, eh? It's like a magnet. How come you do that? I don't know. Whoa, baby. When we come back, our nighttime navigation challenge gets frightening. <laughs> Canada's worst drivers have been abandoned in the middle of nowhere. Now, they're trying to make it back to their hotel with someone else's nominator as their passenger. So do you know where we are right now? I'm no, you okay. have to, yeah. 
Jacob isn't lost thanks to Guy. The water tower? Yeah. See it? Yeah. That's right where our hotel is, eh? Arun is lost when it comes to the rules of the road. Oh what am God, I doing? Am I supposed to stop or do you know what I'm supposed to do? No, just go slow. You sure, yeah. right? And Father Giles has lost his apprehension. For the first time in his life, Father Giles is going the speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got some good news here. The father's getting some of his confidence up. I repeat, Father Giles is actually going the speed limit. That's really good. <laughs> However, what Mike Butt is doing is beyond the limits of speed and sanity. Whoa, 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 that's a lot of... What am I? Oh, I was doing like 130, man. Holy. I'm bad for that. I just don't pay attention to my speed when I'm driving. Yeah, I'm that's... Too con I'm too busy watching the road. If he'd watch the road signs, he'd know the speed limit here was 50. It's 50? Yeah, it's 50. Holy it's 50. shit, I was going 110. If he was caught by the police, he could have a $10,000 fine, vehicle impounded in the spot, driver's license suspended on the spot. This guy's nuts. Oh, drive slow, drive slow, watch it, watch it. What am I doing? Oh, I'm going, oh, it's 60 here. Everything's so slow. Meanwhile, back at the garage where all this started, Angelina is waiting on a tow truck to come and rescue her unregistered vehicle. So you know any show tunes? No. With his good directions and brand new speedy skills... Look at you doing... Oh my God, you've learned so much. Father Giles finishes first. We are home. Father Giles is a changed man. Let's hope he doesn't turn into Jacob. <laughs> Is that the fastest you've ever driven on a public road? So far. Ten minutes later. See the water tower and everything? There you go, yeah. Jacob himself arrives. Excuse me while I give myself a little pat on the back. Jacob isn't done yet. Did I hit that? No. I suck. Oh. Meanwhile, back at the garage. Oh, I don't know what to do. When a rune finishes, needed a life. Yeah. He's smiling, but anxious. Oh, no, no, no. oh Mike makes it back, son. I was with him. Your speed, your speed, your speed. Jeez. <laughs> Approaching the hotel. Right? That's totally illegal. Mike looks over the wrong shoulder, expecting to see the hotel. Oh, burn, burn. Here, 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 left, left. Yeah. Oh. Mike drives faster than he thinks. 130 was the highest I got, which isn't bad for me. A raccoon is about to run in front of Crystal. <laughs> Crystal is wearing her new contact lens. Guess what? Her peripheral vision picked up a raccoon and she didn't hit it. Meanwhile, back at the tow truck. This night driving was a stupid idea. Who drives the night anyway? Dumb drive. For someone who got a ride, Angelina isn't very thankful. I'm traumatized once again for life. I didn't even get to have a sit down and relax. Now I'm going to have to go to bed. Oh, so traumatized. When we come back, handbrake turns. Almost. When Canada's worst drivers showed up in rehab, every single one of them said they never, ever, ever use the handbrake. Now, for their next challenge, the handbrake is going to play a crucial role because we're showing them. Oh. Well, we're, we're showing them the fastest way to turn around. And the fastest way to turn around is a maneuver called a forward handbrake J turn. <laughs> 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 
and Philippe will explain how it's done. So basically what we're going to need for this yeah. is the steering wheel yeah. and the emergency brake. And a speed of 50k an hour. But first, Andrew, we need to slow down to let the front end get heavy. Imagine braking hard. You get thrown towards the dashboard. That same weight shift makes the car's front end heavy. If you're accelerating, simply letting go of the gas pedal will provide a similar but more subtle transfer of weight. The front end will get heavy, the rear will get lighter. Okay. Now to get the front end to become like a pivot point, we're going to need to do a pendulum effect. The pendulum effect is what creates the energy that allows the car to spin. We're going to swing the car one way. Yeah. Come back the other way, so that will make the front end swing. Yeah. And when the front end starts to grab, then you pull the e-brake and then the rear end will slide. So, in this maneuver, weight is transferred twice. Taking your foot off the gas sends momentum forward, making the front end heavy. Then the quick turn to the right sends energy to the left. When the sharp left turn happens, the heavy front end bites into the pavement. While the energy stored in the swinging rear sort of slingshots it around like a pendulum. To do it, Philippe accelerates to 50k an hour. Let go of the gas. Yeah. Here we go. This maneuver seems very intense. And why would we teach bad drivers to do this? It's, it's good to learn about car control, how it works, what it will do when you release the accelerator, what it will do if you do this. And mastering a complicated technique like a J-turn is sure to improve our driver's confidence. Philippe gives me the J-turn steps again. Let go to gas, right, left, e-brake. And also a key thing is to look where you want to exactly. go. Exactly. Okay. The last time I did this was with Philippe two years ago. Soon. Yeah. And you, you could actually let the car go to the right a bit longer. Oh, yeah? Because we need to create the pendulum effect from the front. On my next attempt, I steer farther to the right. And it works. 40, 50. Let go of the gas. That way. Here we go. I'm ready for the challenge. I think you're ready. Cool. For the challenge, I have to do a J-turn around an innocent bystander. It's such a small little confined looking space, I actually fear that I'm going to goof this up. But let's try. I'm going to put it down so I get up to 50 really fast and at 40. It looks tight, but there is plenty of room for me to safely steer around myself. Holy smokes, I did it! Ooh, 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 ooh! I'm a better driver than I think, but how good are Canada's worst drivers? We're about to find out if nerves affect them. When Canada's worst drivers finish their J-turn lessons... Oh. Wow, it's pretty, pretty good. They all feel confident. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm happy. I'm yeah. totally ready for the challenge, yeah. I'll do well. You ready for your challenge? Yeah. Angelina! We'll forget how to do this in three beats. Okay, one, two, three. 30, 40, 50. Oh, I forgot! What? Ah! Drivers will get five chances at this. Tell me what's okay. 50. 20, 30, 40, 50. One. Oh. Pull it! Oh. Are you doing it? Oh, no. I don't know why. There. Angelina hit her brake pedal and lost steering control. I forgot everything. She sure did. Oh my god! I let go! The steering's gone completely out the window. You know, I think she's just jerking the steering wheel. She's not focusing, she's not looking where she wants to go. I'm beginning to get paranoid. This is Angelina's fifth and final chance, and she's relying more on hope than vision. 50. Angelina's world is upside down. I don't know why this keeps happening to me. 
You don't know why this keeps happening to you? No. It's got a lot to do with your steering. Really? Jacob will be spinning... Around a little Stacy. On his first run... Tell me when I'm up to 50. 50. Jacob's freaked out by Stacy. <laughs> uh, I forgot everything. This time? Do you remember everything? Yeah. Jacob remembers the steps, but he does them too late. His head should be looking towards the left for an opening, and you could see he's still looking through the, the front windshield. He's so, absolutely yeah. fixated yeah. on looking straight ahead, isn't he? On his final attempt... 50. Jacob looks like he's late. He makes it, but he's so excited. <laughs> I think I got it. He forgets to leave. But it's still a pass. I kicked ass on that last challenge. When Mike Butt gets in the driver's seat, Jody doesn't know what this challenge is about. You know what, Matt? I'm not even going to tell you what we're doing. I'm just going to let you freak out. This challenge is all about executing under pressure. Oh! Well done, Mike. Well, that's... Oh, you know why? Because I was looking at you instead of where I needed to go. And freaking, they warned me about that, too. This time... Mike executes the steps. A little too late. Well, I got the spin going. I just totally trashed the freaking course, though. On his final run... 40. 50. Mike stays cool under pressure. And that is how that is done. Woo! Mike... did a great job on that. Oh, they did a great job on that. Oh! Crystal gets in some accidents... because under pressure... You're only at 20, 30. She can't steer decisively. Well, I can't do it this way. That's so freaking funny. Crystal is in rehab because her loved ones are worried about her. <laughs> but she just doesn't seem to get it. You're at 30. You're at 40. You're at 50. Go. So I don't think she takes this very seriously. There's not enough room to turn. On her final run, Crystal is way out of order. 50. Oh, my God, you killed me! Crystal isn't honoring what's at stake. You killed me. I know I killed you. Poor Teresa. Can I keep her head? Poor Teresa. <laughs> Arun is the next person scheduled to run this challenge. But, while he waits for the course to get reset, Crystal receives a phone call from her mother. There's been a tragedy. Crystal speaks with Father Giles. Then she wants to talk to us. My mother called and told me that my brother-in-law was riding his motorcycle and was killed in a car accident. Someone hit him or something. We don't know, but he died right away. Crystal will learn that at the scene of the collision, criminal charges were laid against the car driver for failing to yield. It's bizarre to be on a driving show and then someone, my family, gets killed in a car accident while I'm here. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. The Driver Rehabilitation Center exists to prevent road tragedies. 
Today, one of the bad drivers here experienced a tragedy in their family. Crystal's brother-in-law was killed this afternoon while riding his motorcycle. I don't know what happened. Whether, I honestly don't know what happened, whether someone hit him, cut him off, or someone went to a red light, or what happened. Crystal is going home. I learned some stuff, though. I learned how to parallel park. I learned how to drive backwards. And we'll never, ever text and drive again. Never, ever text and drive again. Driving is a privilege. It's not a right. And people should be very careful when they're driving. And they should be aware of their surroundings. Absolutely. Always. It's not just you on the road. The driver of the car that struck Crystal's brother-in-law was criminally charged with failing to yield. Failing to yield is a charge that covers many moving violations, including running red lights. We've seen Arun fail to yield by running through stop signs. I just quickly saw there was no one there. In fact, we've seen all of Canada's worst drivers do some variation of failing to yield. Oh, that's yellow. Even Father Giles has done it. The red light. <laughs> what? You went through the red light. No. Yes. Well, I didn't see it. It's unaware driving like this that kills motorcyclists. So I love you, Crystal and Teresa, and my heart goes out to you. From the bottom of my heart, um, I just want to say I'm sorry and I feel for you. I'm very sorry to hear what happened. I think this is what this show's all about, on how being a better driver can help save lives. This is why it's really important for bad drivers to learn how to drive properly. And this is a great place to actually learn it. How are you today, Father? Very well. Very well. Glad to hear it. Father Giles has been overwhelmed by Crystal's tragedy. You reassess, you reflect, and you say, how can I be a better driver? How? And suddenly, this outside incident has really brought the stakes home. Yes, it has. Definitely. Yep. Mike has come to realize that it could have been me smoking into that guy, you know what I mean? Um, I can't imagine what they're going through and, you know, the guy who hit him is going through. Mike, on the night challenge, you're doing more than double the speed limit. You're doing 110 in a 50 zone. Honestly, when I drive, I don't really look at the speedometer because to me that's not where the critical information is. It's out there. Crashes uh, at those speeds can certainly be unsurvivable, especially if you were to collide perhaps with a motorcyclist. Jacob has hit lots of good drivers. What have you hit in your driving past? Mostly moving cars, yeah. Like how many accidents are we talking about? At least a dozen. And that's why I'm glad I'm here and learning some things. Arun is also lucky that he's never killed a motorcyclist. In the passing challenge, it cut people off, and that's basically what cost this motorcyclist his life. The same can be said to Angelina. Just a few hours ago, we were all reminded of what's really at stake on our nation's roads. This is the part of the show where we would normally graduate the best motorist here. But tonight, out of simple respect, we're not putting any bad drivers back on the road. Next episode, we will resume the serious business of rehabilitating Canada's worst drivers.